What's up guys, Crypto Muser here with your daily news and analysis in the crypto markets. Now today in my video I want to talk about, obviously we had the Super Bowl last night, um, great game between the Rams and Bengals I have to say. I was rooting for the Bengals but got to give it to the Rams, um, they played a great game. Uh, Stafford I believe deserved that, Cooper Cup deserved it and for sure Aaron Donald at the end there definitely deserved it. So got to give it up to the Rams and um, in LA for... Um, that big win. But before I get to uh, the video, I just want to say if you could please hit the like and subscribe, hit the bell for notification, it would be very much appreciated. You know, by liking and subscribing, it gets that YouTube algorithm, you know, sharing my channel as, uh, more and more. And so I can get this content to you guys and get it out to more and more people. So really appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe and let's get on to the video. So back to the game. Great game, obviously, but Everybody was obviously talking about either the halftime show or the crypto commercials. And I was on Twitter while I was watching the game to get people's reactions of, you know, each commercial that came up. And I believe we had four commercials. We had one from FTX. We had one from Coinbase, one from Crypto.com, and another one from eToro. Um, you know, it was funny watching the tweets come in and how people either liked or disliked each commercial. Um, my favorite, I believe, was FTX, just because I'm a big Larry David fan. Um, I just thought that his comedy is hilarious. So by by using that humor in his comedy to promote um, crypto, I thought that was a genius idea. And, um, you know, Coinbase, I thought was genius. I, I think a lot of people either hated it, or hated it or loved it. And either way, it was talked about. I mean, I think it was the, the most talked about crypto ad out there but just because there was so much either love or hate out there for it. But I want to talk about just how um, good of a commercial that was. So this is Chip from on the on the chain. Um, so this is the ad. He actually. So let's just watch like the second half. So basically, for it. So it's basically a, a nostalgic thing with this, right? Like anybody that maybe in the age group of like twenty five to fifty remembers this little, you know, before a video, you know, when you're in school or wherever, you before you watch a video, you had this little rectangle going up in the corner, and you wait for it to hit the corner of the. Uh, the box and the TV. So you're all sitting there watching it like, is it going to hit the corner? Is it going to hit the corner? So it's it was kind of a nostalgic thing. And people over 50 or, you know, didn't even probably don't even know what a QR code is. So, it you know, it's definitely going after a specific age group. But I believe if you scan this QR code, it was giving you $15 of Bitcoin and it signed you up automatically to onto Coinbase. So it was, you know, I think it was a genius um, strategy for an ad, was it worth $7 million? Uh, I don't really think so. But, you know, I'll show you some numbers to show you how good of an ad it actually was. But let's just finish this um, quick ad just to show people if they haven't seen it. Okay, is it gonna hit the corner? Is it gonna hit the corner? So, I mean, was it worth $7 million? I mean, it attracted a lot of people for sure. Let's look at the numbers here. So Blockworks tweeted this out. Coinbase's website got 20 million hits in one minute after its ad on the Super Bowl. 20 million hits in one minute, guys. That's crazy, right? Those numbers are ridiculous. Um, let's look at another stat here that Blockworks put out. Coinbase went from 186th place to second place on the App Store after the Super Bowl ad. So did it work? I mean, obviously it worked, but anybody that's been in crypto long enough, what happens when Coinbase, when it gets high traffic, it crashes. And this is the exact reason why I don't like Coinbase. They want to spend $7 million on an ad and they won't spend the money to actually, you know, keep up their servers so they don't crash during high traffic. Like, what are you good for if I can't use your platform to buy and sell crypto when I need to at the most important times? Obviously the most high traffic times um, in crypto are going to be the times where you need to be, you know, your platform needs to be up. And if it crashes when I, when, you know, prices are skyrocketing and I need to go on your platform and sell and I can't, then what good are you for me? What good are you for anybody? So the fact that once again, I believe every time either Bitcoin's pump in or there's some type of big event, Coinbase or, you know, most exchanges are crashing and they need to do something about this because you, if you can't trust them, um, in high traffic um, spots like this, and how can you even, how can you even use these these products? I'm never going to use Coinbase because I know I just don't trust them. And new users, you know, they're going to learn that the hard way. And like I said, if they don't, 
they don't work on this problem, then they're going to lose more and more business and they're going to wreck people. Like, what good are you? I mean, a whole point, the whole point of an exchange is to be able to, you know, put my crypto on your exchange and sell into, you know, a stable coin or fiat or whatever it is. But if I can't do that, then what good are you to me? You're not good at all. So yes, your your ad definitely worked, and it got a lot of users. Obviously, 20 million users in a minute. Um, that's huge. But <laughs> for us it, that have been in crypto um, for a long time, like I've been in for about four and a half years, this is just a sign that I'm definitely not using you guys in the future. And the fact that you delisted XRP doesn't help your, your case either. But you know, I never really was a big fan of Coinbase anyway. But yes, your your um, commercial was I thought was genius. But if your platform doesn't work in high traffic, then what, like I said, what good are you for? Um, let's move on to the FTX commercial. So I thought this was the most, my favorite one. And let's just, so pretty amazing actually with the giveaway they were doing. So the next big thing is here, even if Larry David can't see it. And I'm not going to show the whole commercial. This is like a, the extended version of the commercial. I believe it was only like a minute long, but this is two, uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. And I definitely recommend you guys to go check it out hilarious uh, video doesn't even talk about crypto until the end and i think that's the best way it just kind of like um you know it was like a basically a really funny commercial and then at the end it they you know, punch you with the you know crypto and and i thought that was a great way to to get it out to new users um but look let's look at this giveaway that they were doing so we're giving away 7.54 bitcoin right now to celebrate how to enter you had to watch it watch the ad follow them and then retweet this before midnight last night I thought that was genius. Um, th I thought the commercial was genius, and I thought this giveaway was genius. I mean, that's. I mean, I think Coinbase. If you scan the QR code, I think it was fifteen dollars in Bitcoin, and it signed you up to their platform, which is nice. But I mean, a chance to win seven point five Bitcoin. That's a that's a lottery right there, right? So I thought that you know I thought FTX's um, overall um, advertisement was better, um, but. You know, I could be biased because I really do not like Coinbase that much, but I'll give it to him. I said that, you know, the, the Coinbase ad was was good. It was genius, but I trust FTX more than Coinbase at this point, right? So like I said, you definitely should check out this ad if you haven't, but let's move on to the Crypto.com commercial. Now, obviously, having LeBron James shill your platform is never going to be a bad thing, right? I mean, LeBron James has, what, 50 million followers, 100 million followers? I don't even know. Obviously, millions and millions of people, you know, follow what LeBron James does on a daily basis. So if he's out there shilling your platform and your crypto platform, obviously a great thing for them, right? And I think Crypto.com has now, I think they have, is it, is it, yeah, Matt Damon was on the commercial, but I don't know. I think Tom Brady's with FTX. Yeah. So anyway, Crypto.com and FTX, I really have the big names, obviously, shilling their platform now. And is this a bad thing or is this a good thing? I believe, I believe it's a good thing. It gets you know more people involved in crypto, but is it maybe a sign that we're at the top of this market? I I'd probably say so, right? I think we have another you know three to six months of maybe bullish act price action for crypto, and obviously that all um, relies on the current events with the Fed and the stock market. But I believe that we will have even in the stock market. I believe we'll have the next you know half of the year of bullish price action. But, you know, I'm not, I guess I'll show this ad because this is only 30 seconds long. We'll just, if you haven't seen this one. All right, so, Coilless headphones. You can watch movies through your phone. And y'all got electric cars? Yeah. The future is crunk. Anything else you want to know? Is the hype too much? Am I ready? I can't tell you everything. But if you want to make history, you got to call your own shots. We're going to the league. We're going to the league. We're going to the league. Oh. Fortune favors the brave. Got to give it to them. I think that was a good commercial, too. I think that that is a relatable commercial um, and also gives that nostalgia, too, because it kind of, it, you know, 2003, that's, I think I graduated high school in 2003. To, to think um, in 2003 and where we are today, it's, it's crazy to think how much we've... Um, We've progressed. It's unbelievable, actually, if you think about it. Look at the iPhone. I mean, I remember using my little Nokia phone playing Snake, thinking that was like the best thing going at that time. And now look at we have iPhones that have, you know, you could, it's like a, a full computer in your palm of your hand. You can get information like that. You know, it's crazy. 
Like you, technology is moving at such a fast pace. And I think that's why crypto is such a big thing right now. It's it's evolving so quickly and that it's almost evolving so quickly that the politicians and the regulators can't even keep up with it. I think that's why they're so afraid of it. And I actually have a quote at the end of this video just to show you that um, I think that's the main reason why um, people are so afraid of this because they really don't, they can't understand it. It's evolving so quickly and there's so many different parts to this that they really can't understand it. And they're, you know, people are afraid of new things and they're afraid of things, they're afraid of things they don't understand, right? But let's get into this. So we, I just talked about the Fed and what they're doing. Let's just, um, so I saw this tweet and I thought this was um, very telling what's going on with the Fed and, and the stock market and the the QE and the inflation and everything's scaring the markets right now, right? So this is Mr. John Tull tweeted this out. The Fed is trapped. Their rate raises are false flags because they can't crush stocks. But raise, but rate, uh, rate, ri sorry, but rate rises and cutting QE are their only tool to curb inflation. They have to pick a poison, and history says they'll go with stocks and more easy money while um, while claiming they have more tools. So I think. This is this is the problem that the Fed has right now. I mean, look what a couple weeks ago, just the the idea that they were going to raise rates. You know, uh, Jerome Powell went up there and said, you know, we are planning to raise rates in March, and just the thought of raising rates crashed the market, put so much fear in the market. Where we had one of the most the worst weeks in the stock market, we had you know Bitcoin obviously tanking from that high at sixty nine thousand. That was basically just because they said they were going to raise rates. So what's going to happen when they actually raise rates and stop this um, liquidity injection or they slow it down? So, you know, the Fed really backed themselves into a corner here. Obviously, inflation is going crazy. You see, you see gas prices, you see food prices. I mean, everybody that, you know, went shopping for the Super Bowl saw like the chicken wings are up. They're double. You know, steaks are double. Every, milk's up. Everything is, is, you know, double in price almost. It's kind of crazy. So obviously, we're seeing the inflation, you know, firsthand. But here's what the Fed, the problem with the Fed right now, if they raise rates and if they stop liquidity injections, that will definitely crash the market, the stock market, the crypto market, the world markets as a whole. And they can't afford that. Let's be real. I mean, the stock market used to be just the basically that the rich were in it, involved, right? It was the top 1% that were mostly involved in the stock market. But since um, in the last couple of years, you've seen retail investors really get involved in the stock market like no other time in history. You know, you had Robinhood, you have E-Trade, all these different um, platforms now that you can get involved, that everyday person can get now and invest in the stock market. And obviously that's, you know, it's moving towards the crypto market too, but, you know, the average person definitely is more involved in the stock market than ever before. So if you crash the stock market now, that's going to that's gonna tank, you know, the U.S. economy and world economies, you know, all around the world. So the, like I said, they're really backed into a corner here. I just don't believe they're going to raise rates. They're going to maybe talk about raising rates, but I just, I think the money printing keeps keeps going, you know, and I want to show you this chart that I showed you yesterday um, to show you that why they're, they put themselves in this situation. You know, it's not like we did this, you know, the, the Federal Reserve, the politicians, the economists are the ones that put us in this terrible position we're in. So this chart is, um, this is the totally the stock index, U.S. stock index, since 2000, uh, since 1998 here. So obviously this is the, the dot-com bubble here. And then we saw, obviously that was a huge crash. And then from then we kind of like st steadily were rising up, rising up. And then this is the 2008 crash. That little blip right there, that's the 2008 crash. And what happened since then? QE started going at a, QE, quantitative easing, if you guys don't know what that is, that's basically money printing, right? Buying, um, the Federal Reserve buying assets. And look at the way it just pumped the market. And even in these, you know, little corrections here, this is the correction at the end of 2018. This is the C19 correction. Every time we had a correction, they just bought it back up. You know, they just didn't let, the, uh, you know, every every market needs a, a correction. It's healthy in the market to have big corrections, right? They just didn't let it happen. They They were just too money hungry. They were too power hungry and money hungry. And they just kept printing that dollar. And obviously, since the C19, I mean, look at that. That's crazy. I mean, did everybody think the economy was doing well in this time? No, but the stock market was. If you had money in the stock market, you were getting rich. So this is when most retail investors got involved in the stock market because you're getting these, you know, you get unemployment, you're getting the uh, um, stimulus checks. 
And most people were putting it right into, into crypto, or, but mostly in the stock market, right? And so this is the main reason why I think that they can't stop now. They've just gone past the, the, the line to stop and, and crash this market. Because if they stop now, this is like we're looking at a depression. And I believe that's happening anyway, um, whether they like it or whether they like it or not, it's going to happen. But they're not going to do it on their hands, right? That by them, they're not they're, like if they have the control, they're going to they're going to keep printing, right? And we all know that that's not sustainable. That's you know this will end badly at some point down the line. So not not financial advice, but definitely get your ducks in order. You know, precious metals, um, selling into doll, the dollar. I know people are you know this cry, this inflation scares people out of the dollar but you know after this inflation scare you're going to have a deflation major deflation so being into the dollar as much as people don't like it the dollar is king around the world the dollar still buys goods around the world right You're, you you can't really buy stuff with crypto yet and you wouldn't even want to buy stuff with crypto yet so dollar is still king so selling into the dollar is still what I'll I'll be doing and like I said not financial advice but I mean you guys should be planning on doing the same and precious metals might even dip with the, this market crash so it's always good to have those precious metals and crypto because i believe if we do have a huge crash you know you'll see crypto and precious metals probably rising faster than everything else because it'll be it's still you know for sure a um, hedge against inflation against the dollar so this you know if we do see a huge crash that'll be even that'll solidify in people's minds that obviously the dollar is won't be um key for the future so people will definitely that would be a huge boost for crypto going on in the next five or ten years but in the short term obviously you know i believe the crypto markets will even crash you know more than the stock market just because it's still a risk asset and it's still very speculative so you know back to the fed they they just they're backed into a corner here they can't raise rates they can't stop the quantitative easing they got to keep this party going basically and like i said i don't think it's going to end well so guys, get your ducks in order and just in, on this next, like I said, no, not financial advice, but in the next three to six months, if we see some, you know, serious price action, um, make sure you take some profits, you know, definitely, you know, and don't be afraid to, to put it in a stable coin. That's, that's probably good too. But, you know, the U.S. dollar, like I said, is still king. So don't be afraid to, to take profits in the dollar. You know, maybe people are against that, but I just don't see anything changing with the U.S. dollar on um, the next five, five years or so. After that, yeah, we could start talking about, you know, it, use, it losing its um, world reserve currency status. But for now, it's still king around the world. So just wanted to bring uh, talk about that for a second, because obviously that's the biggest thing leading the markets right now is the Fed. And then we have the Russia, um, Ukraine scares and all stuff like that. But the main thing right now is the Federal Reserve and inflation. And what are they going to do? Right. They have a secret meeting going on right now today. We'll see what that comes out of that. Um you know, that would probably have a lot to do with what the markets do in the next week or so. Uh, maybe they say they're going to, I'm sure they're going to say the same thing and say, we're still looking at the data um, and we're, you know, we have every plan to raise rates down down the line, but for now we're still keeping uh, everything normal, right? They're, they're going to basically give us nothing like they did in the last meeting they had. You know, same old, same old, right? So let's get into the next thing I want to talk about here. Um, so this was uh, Robert Breedlove posted this. I saw this story a couple days ago, and I really wanted to show you this because this is, I thought this was huge, right? The fact that we have, um, so that, I'll just read the, so new machine invented that turns pollution into money. Seems like it might catch on. Um, these 23-year-old Texans made $4 million last year mining Bitcoin off flare gas from oil drilling. Now, this is, I believe, yeah, Brent Whitehead and uh, Matt Lestrow, Lestrow are mining Bitcoin off flare gas from oil drilling. Their company, Giga, places a shipping container full of thousands of Bitcoin miners on an oil well, diverts the natural gas into generators, which convert the gas into electricity that then use the power for mining. <clears throat> Excuse me. The process reduces CO2 equivalent emissions by, and I can't read the thing, but it, it reduces the CO2 emissions, which is another big thing um, for just the optics of this, right? The whole thing people are against Bitcoin right now and against Bitcoin mining is because of the energy waste, right? The fact that this can actually take the wasted energy and 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 <clears throat> sorry and convert that into crypto mining, and obviously you're creating jobs at the same time. I believe this is huge, and the whole you know um, talk about you know Bitcoin being bad for the environment 
this t turns that right on its head, right? This is a perfect story to see um, against that whole narrative against, you know, the bad free environment thing. So thought this was huge. I think this is going to, um, you're going to see more and more of this for sure. There's so much wasted energy out there with these oil rigs and, you know, everything out there. There's so much wasted energy. And we can turn that, those renewables and this wasted energy into, into Bitcoin mining, you know, creating wealth for these people, these young kids right here, and that also creates jobs uh, moving towards the future. So I think this was a huge story, honestly. And like I said, I think you're going to see more and more of this moving on to the future. <clears throat> I know it's around my throat. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about. So I wanted to say, I think this, so I'll read the tweet, and this is exactly along the lines of what I'm thinking right now, too. I think the real issue most critics have with crypto is that it's new and complex and hard to understand. And they just barely figured out the internet. And I don't want to have, they don't want to have to learn about a whole nother thing. And other people are making money on it, but they aren't. So please, so please can it just let, so please can you just let it go away? So I fully, I believe this is the big issue with um, the boomers and the people that just don't understand this technology. And I think it was the same thing. If you look at, um, you know, um, talk shows and stuff back in the early uh, mid nineties talking about the internet, they just didn't understand it. Right. They were like, Oh, I don't understand this. This is something new. And it's, it's just a, a fad. It's a bubble and it'll go away. Oh, people are making money off it. Well, I don't, I'm not making money, so I don't care. Like just go away. Right. And I believe this is the big thing with crypto right now where, you know, this is such a, an evolving technology where, you know, it progresses every day. You know, look in the last year you had, you know, DeFi, you have NFTs, you have the metaverse gaming tokens, um, so many different parts to this technology that people are just can't keep up with, right? The average person is are like, what? What is this? They don't even they can't understand it. I mean, I'm, I've been involved in this for four and a half years, and it, I'm still kind of getting some of this, right? It's very complex. Let's be real. But if you think about it, like look at email, right? The the tech behind email and how we move information is very complex too. But the average person doesn't need to know the whole. Um, the complex technology behind it they just need to know how to use it and it's if it's easy to use then they don't care right they don't care about the tech behind it and the same thing with the internet and, and crypto you know the average person doesn't need to know the whole what's blockchain and what what all this is um it'd be good to to learn it and be educated in that but the average person just needs an easy way to to use it right so you know the people that are regulating this the politicians they need to be educated for sure because they need to be regulating this. And the fact that they are so, you know, the banks are afraid of this because they know they're going to lose business and the politicians are afraid of it because the banks pay them. Um, so they're all afraid of this, right? They're afraid of something new. They're afraid of something uh, they can't understand. They're afraid of something that is complex and and it, it's understandable, right? Like, but this is happening. So I think that you see half of the half of politicians or people in power are, are still kind of against it. You know, they're still like two years ago with most people. But then you're seeing the other half of the people in power either getting involved with it or educating themselves with it. And they see now the the other half that are getting involved, they're seeing this is huge money for them. And they will try to control it for sure. And, you know, we'll do our best to to stop that. But it, it, at some point down the line, um, they will get their hands on this. I mean, the people in power are not just going to let this, um, let the everyday people take this over and take over the whole financial system. Let's be real. The whole Bitcoin people, the Bitcoin maximalists that think that, you know, Bitcoin's going to be the legal tender around the whole world and that um, we're going to take over the big banks and, you know, screw the powers that be and all that. That's a that's a pipe dream. The powers that be are, are not going to just let you guys take over their whole financial system that they've been running for the last hundred years. They will, you know, adapt or die, obviously, but they will adapt to this new technology. And it's taking obviously more time than we thought just because they are trying to slow it down. Let's be real. You know, they know that they're going to lose business from this. But I believe that the smart people will evolve and, um, you know, make money off of this. This Guys, this, this like I said in my last video, it's only a $1.7 trillion market cap. And we got up to $3 trillion last year. But that's still pennies, guys, compared to what this could be. You know, I'm talking a $100 trillion market cap. That's serious money. And the people that you see, the corporations, the... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the countries, the corporations, the the big time, um, even the celebrities, they see where this is going. They see where the money, I mean, they're making, the celebrities are making tons of money off of these ads. So if these exchanges are making tons of money and these, um, um, obviously there's money to be made, right? So if there's money to be made, 
you obviously the powers that be want to control it or they want to be involved in it. So like I said, I thought the suite was perfect because I just think that, you know, half the people are still so afraid of something new. But this is happening. The train has moved with the crypto revolution here. Um, so just wanted to end there and just to let you know how early we still are. You know, the fact that we still have people trying to stop this or th actually thinking they can stop this is beyond me. You know, they have to get with the program or like I said, they will be left behind. And um, I'll end there, guys. Um, please remember to like and subscribe to the bell for notification. Really appreciate all the support, guys. And just remember, I am not a financial advisor. Please do not take anything I say or write as financial advice. Um, this is for educational pur purposes only. And thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.